With the holiday season over, and all of you fattened up from your Christmas hams and puddings... Actually, just look at you. You're disgusting. You disgust me. You're disgusting, you fat fuck! It's time to get off your lazy bum and get back into the gist of things. Going back to your old jobs and doing chores and whatnot. However, if you're like me, you're too bloated from all the delicious trans fat that Christmas is so well known for. Now for a limited time at McDonald's, it's the McCardiac Arrest. Five extra greasy patties topped with deep fried cheese, bacon, and chocolate syrup, chocolate covered bacon, Budweiser, and cigarettes between two loaves of raisin holo bread. Only $29.99. Comes with a free blood pressure test. <laughs> Fucking damn it! You realize you only have one option. <laughs> Wouldn't it be great if we had robots that did all of our work for us so that we could just sit around, do nothing, while getting credit for all the work the robot does? We could live free lives, being as lazy and fat as we want. If only there was some platform we could base these robots off, something interactive and fun for all ages. There are so many robots that range from helpful to badass in video games, so we're going to count down the top 10 robots in video games. Quick side note, these are robots, not mechs. So as cool as the Metal Gear is, I can't count it for this list. With that out of the way, let's get started. When you first step foot onto the planet of Pandora, one of the first characters you're introduced to is CL4PTP, or as his friends call him, Claptrap, a robot created by Dr. Zed in order to guide the player through the treacherous planet of Pandora. In the first game, he acts as more of a guide, until in the DLC, when he turns into Interplanetary Ninja Assassin Claptrap, and you have to fight him, and holy fucking shit, it's awesome. In the second game, he adds comedy to his guiding spiel. Oh, Claptrap, you crack me up. And in the prequel, he's actually a playable character. Shooting things up as a robot! Yeah. But the reason he's on the list is because of his comedic tone even in the darkest and most desperate situation. I sound pleased about this. It's only because my programmers made this my default tone of voice. I'm actually quite depressed. It can Shut mostly be God, seen Steve. in Poker Night 2 and Claptrap's web series. That's right, Claptrap has his own web series. He's that fucking great. Tell me that's not a real thing one more time. You fucking say it with your tiny speaker mouth that it's not a real thing. In the Mortal Kombat universe, the two main classes of characters are robots and ninjas, even though the ninjas all look the same with a FUCKING PALLET SWAP DIFFERENT! But when you think of Mortal Kombat robots, the two that come to mind are Cyrax and Sector, members of the Lin Kuei. Sure, Smoke and Cyber Sun Zero also come to mind, but Smoke spent half of the games as a human, whereas Cyrax and Sector have been robots for basically all the games, sans the 2011 reboot, and Cyber Sub Zero, well, that's just really dumb. Cyrax and Sector, on the other hand, are fucking awesome. They've got laser nets and rockets and trash compactors. Fucking trash compactors! 10 out of 10! While these two are iconic, strong badass robots in the fighting game series, they're not as good as this next robot. Fulgore is the epitome of badassery. Yeah, that's a word. Look it up. Dust off that old dictionary of yours that your grandmother gave you that one Christmas and look it up. Because I swear to God, that's a fuck created by the video game equivalent of Skynet, also known as Ultratech, and designed after an old-timey English knight. Fulgore Type 3 is fast, buff, sleek, and comes fully equipped with plasma claws 
laser eyes, cyber ports, reflectors, plasma storms, and even a finishing move that is a nuclear reactor laser blast from his chest. Oh, did I forget to mention that he's powered by a nuclear reactor? Because I, I probably should have mentioned that he's powered by a fucking nuclear reactor. In the KI universe, if you don't have Fulgore on your side, you can kiss your life adieu. Oh, come on! You knew Portal had to appear somewhere on this list. After Wheatley's decommission and Shell's departure from the testing, GLaDOS created two dim-witted but surprisingly clever robots, Atlas and Peabody. GLaDOS put them through a large amount of puzzles, like what Shell had to go through, but can't be completed without cooperative play. And trust me, it's difficult because Player 2 NEVER KNOWS WHAT TO DO! GLaDOS did whatever she could to drive the two apart, but after all of the tests, it was scientifically proven that the two of them couldn't be split up under any circumstances whatsoever. And if they did, the fabric of the known universe would tear as we know it. Like Abbott and Costello, Laurel and Hardy, and Bush and Janey, Atlas and Peabody are like two peas in a body. Get it? Because his name is Peabody. <laughs> Joke of the year 2015. I mean 2016. Four! Although he technically doesn't have a game to call his own, Robot Operating Buddy, or Rob for short, played an important part in gaming history. One of the first gaming peripherals, Rob was accessible with only two games, Gyromite in which you have to collect before time runs out, and the other game is Stack Up in which I honestly have no idea. Like, I literally don't know what's going on. Someone, if you know, let me know. However, Rob's appearance in many other games, such as the following list will show. So while Rob may not have a game to call his own, he's always welcome in other Nintendo games. For a flat rate of $65 per game. And if he can't pay that, the tough sh- You know how's it in Banjo Kazooie? How's it Kazooie be in Banjo's backpack? All the poop and fecal matter lining the wall and floors of the backpack. Just so much feces. Well, in the Ratchet and Clank series, at least Ratchet treats Clank as more than a backpack, even though he is a backpack. But besides that, and being pretty damn funny, Clank plays an important role in the Ratchet and Clank series. He can not only transform into a wide assortment of weapons and tools that Ratchet can use, but, and spoiler alert, BTW, he also saves Ratchet's life by gaining the ability to travel through time after Alistar kills him. Also, he has a spin-off game in which he is a BADASS SPY! I mean, it's okay. Not too bad, but, you know, not too good. 10 out of 10! Star Wars is one of the greatest movie franchises of all time, and it's had some pretty good games with it. E except that one. And that one. And the one where Han Solo FUCKING DANCES! No! No! That is not okay! Now obviously I can't include C-3PO or R2-D2 or my personal favorite, IG-88. You know, IG-88. The Bounty Hunter? That one right there. It must be a robot that originated from a Star Wars video game. And there's no robot that better fills those shoes than HK-47 from Knights of the Old Republic. He's a hunter-killer assassin droid and Jedi hunter constructed by Darth Revan shortly after the end of the Mandalorian War. He's a killing machine who has no filter for human emotions, calls humans meatbags, and, well, just take a look at this. Request. Let me deal with him, Master. It would be so much fun. Explanation. It is my combative nature, Master. I cannot help myself. I'll make it up to you. Allow me to kill something in your honor. Translation. He requires proof of good faith. 
We must make a contribution to his people that shows we are not a threat. Shall I blast him now? Fucking awesome. Out of all the characters in the original Sonic Adventure game, there was no character whose story I found more intriguing, more emotional, and just downright ingenious than that of E-102 Gamma. Gamma, a creation of Dr. Robotnik, was programmed to help the Doctor find and collect all the Chaos Emeralds, no questions asked, and no matter what. However, Gamma witnesses many disturbing events, such as the destruction of his brother Beta by the hands of the man who created him. Well, well not really him. He programmed some other robot to disassemble him, but, you know, same, same shit. It's the same. It's the same. It's the same thing! And in the mistreatment of his follow E-Series robots, and even is able to gain emotions such as love and pity. It's a story of emotion going against what you've been taught to believe, and a surprise ending that no one saw coming. That's right, I'll spoil Ratchet and Clank, but not a game from over a decade ago. That's how good E-102 Gamma is. What? You think Portal was only gonna be on this list once? No, no, no. No. Nope. Nada. Zero. Zilch. No comprende, senor! And no robot is more deserving of a spot on this list than GLaDOS. I could go on and on for hours about how GLaDOS is one of the funniest video game characters of all time, or how she's a cold-hearted bitch with no filler for her emotions, or the life of other organisms, or the complex and intriguing backstory behind her and Aperture Science, or that she lives and breathes testing, or that she's one hell of a poker dealer, or that she has a hell of a singing voice, or some of the most memorable quotes in video game history. But let's be realistic here. There's one true reason we remember GLaDOS, and everybody say it with me now. The cake is right here. <laughs> GLaDOS is one of the most important and influential characters in video game history, and definitely deserves a spot on this list. Before we get to number one, here are some robots that didn't quite make the list, but still get an honorable mention. Meet Metal Sonic, my creation and your destruction. You're not the only one who knows how to build robots, you know. Shepard Commander, we concluded that destruction of this station was the only resolution to the heretic question. There is now a second option. Their virus can be repurposed. If released into the station's network, the heretics will be rewritten to accept our truth. Hi! This is big, huh? A very big moment. Here goes. I'll just take that platinum chip off your hands. Thanks. Wish me luck. On three. Ready? One. Two. Three! That's high. It's w it's too high, isn't it really, that? All right, going on three just gives you too much time to think about it. Let's uh, go on one this time. Okay, ready? One. Catch me, catch me! Ow! Ow. There's only one robot who's been through so many games and spin-offs that there's nothing left for him to do. One robot who saved the world on so many occasions that he's earned the nickname the Super Fighting Robot. And only one robot is so well known that the name of this robot can get a crowd of people excited and screaming his name. That robot is none other than... Who's gonna get it, people? Mega Man! Mega Man! <laughs> The Blue Bomber is one of the most iconic video game characters of all time, and by far my favorite video game character ever. And if you think I'm biased, shut up, it's my list. 
deal with it. He's strong, smart, and has bitchin' hair. Why does a robot need hair, you may ask? Well, how else can he be bitchin'? He has the ability to steal abilities of enemies and robot masters that he encounters, and uses them to defeat other robot masters and the evil Dr. Wily. Or, as Dr. Light calls him in Mega Man 8, Dr. Wowie. And for people who are against video game violence, he's a peaceful fighter. All the robot masters he defeats are rebuilt and put to good use. Almost all of his games are perfect down to the last detail. And because of his constant positive attitude towards doing the right thing, his awesome badassery, and, well, he's fucking Mega Man. He not only deserves to be one of the most iconic video game characters of all time, but he also deserves to be number one on this list. Be sure to stay tuned after the video for a preview of the next top 10. Did you like the video? Be sure to like, comment, share, and subscribe. Do you agree with my list? Have an idea for a top 10? Or do you just want to talk about how stupid I am? Leave it in the comments below. Thank you so much for watching my top 10. Please follow me on Twitter, and until next time, stay lovely. On the next top 10. Screw the pooch. To have screwed up or to have made a mistake.